Pastor Chooks, along with his wife, Pastor Toyin, are the lead pastors of Resurrection Life Church in Johannesburg, South Africa. Through them, God is raising an army of ordinary men and women who are transforming and uplifting the standard of life in their communities through understanding and applying biblical principles. Pastor Chooks and Pastor Toyin frequently host workshops, seminars and conferences for transformation and uplifting of the complete man, complete woman and wholesome families. Some of the events and programs include the Dream Achievers Seminars and Conferences, Kingdom Financiers Conferences, Marriage Enrichment Courses and Seminars, For Wives Only Seminars, Single Ladies Boot Camps, Limitless Men's Seminars, they are also the founders of the Power of Women Academy, a group mentorship for high-impact women. They also host the annual Power of Women conferences and events. For more information, please visit www.idelight.co.za and www.reslife.org.za or WhatsApp plus 27814210835. Good evening. Welcome to another Friday evening when we hang out around the wisdom for relationships. It's thank God it's Friday, and my name is Chucks Ugoi here. Uh, I have quite exciting stuff to share with us tonight. Thank God it's Friday for those if you are joining us for the first time. It's our relationship outfit where we teach on the wisdom of God for building strong relationships. Thank God this Friday is an expression of our, one of our callings, one of the things that God has graced us with. We are graced to teach about relationships. And um, so, so Fridays is for us uh, a day to find expression for that endowment, for that gift of God in our lives, to share on the wisdom of God for building relationships. So it's, it's all kinds of relationships, romantic relationships, marriage relationships, um, you know, all kinds of relationships, single people, married people, engaged people, uh, people of God generally. So if you, when you want to learn relationship wisdom, it's Thank God this Friday. That's where we get relationship wisdom. And um, tonight, yes, we are sharing uh, my, my, my meditation tonight and I think it's going to overflow uh, into next week because the content I have, I cannot unpack it in the next uh, 30 minutes. So I'm going to share what I can tonight and then I'm going to continue next week. Building high impact relationships. Building high impact relationships. So tonight will be part one. Um, next week I'm going to do part two. Then when I'm done with part two, I'm going to um, um, teach on building relationship with high impact people. Building relationship with high impact people. There are dynamics that you need to learn. But tonight we are talking about building high impact relationships. So I want you to stay tuned the next uh, four, sat, four Fridays um, to learn some of these things. You need it for your destiny. Now, now let, let me define high impact relationship. What is it? What is a high impact relationship? A high impact relationship is any relationship that delivers high potency value that aids you in achieving your critical success goals and these relationships actually ought to be mutual they are mutual relationships so it's a mutual relationship in other words the two people in the relationship um, uh, enjoy uh, the delivery of high potency value that aid them that aid them it aids a it aids b to uh, achieve their critical success goals. So that's what a high impact relationship is. Now, this is so important because anytime that God wants to do something in your life, God wants to lift you, God wants to take you to another level, he brings a high impact relationship to you. And, and examples are bound in scriptures that when God wants to change somebody's life, he brings a high impact relationship to them. And, and that changes everything about them. Okay, we, we can talk about Jesus and his disciples. We can talk about, you know, uh, um, uh, Moses and Joshua. We can talk about uh, uh, Mary and, and Elizabeth. We, we, we're going to come to those examples. But these were examples of, you know, people who were brought into people's lives and their lives changed. 
Their circumstances changed. Uh, and that's what God does. Adam and Eve, you know, those are examples of high-impact relationships. But I'm, I'm going to come to that in a, in a moment. So there are relationships through which the grace of God flows into your life. Okay? To help you become what God wants you to become. That's what a high-impact relationship is. And for, for, um, for the two people in the relationship, you see, this person is a vessel that God is using to pour into this person, and the other person is pouring back, uh, you know, similarly into the other person. So, so there is mutual value, there's mutuality. Because if it is one-sided, if it is one-sided, it becomes a bit parasitic. So one person is dying, the other person is growing. No, it's not supposed to be. A high-impact relationship ought to have mutuality. You know, both people feed each other and serve the purposes of God for each other. So it's a relationship that serves purpose. It's a relationship that serves divine purpose. And when, what we're talking about here, it has to be mutual. Okay? And it can be different types of relationships, you know? A, a, a marriage relationship ought to be a high-impact relationship. However, as, as I'm going to uh, touch on, maybe not today, maybe next week, I, I don't know, but let me see how I go. You know, a, a relationship could have been designed to be high-impact by God, but man and his stupidity and his foolishness caused that relationship to fall short of God's expectation for it. There are a lot of relationships that should have blossomed into, you know, something phenomenal that is supposed to benefit both parties. But because of immaturity, because of lack of wisdom, because of a lack of understanding of the things that I'm sharing tonight, people have killed relationships that are supposed to have helped them. And they didn't nurture it, and they didn't value it. And those relationships were left to languish. And God wants to fix it for you. And that's why this wisdom is coming to you today. God wants to fix it for you. Maybe there are high-impact relationships that God brought into your life that are supposed to, you know, help you uh, uh, fulfill destiny. They, they're supposed to serve the destiny and the purposes of God for your life. And you're supposed to serve them also, but you made mistakes. And you were not able to, you know, rectify things and resolve things and, you know, the relationship never matured into its uh, uh, full potential. It never grew to deliver all that was supposed to be delivered in it. And the devil loves it when relationships that are meant to be high-impact relationships live less than uh, uh, their, their full potential. The devil loves it. The devil enjoys it. So, so, so we want to learn this thing so that uh, you know, the Bible says that my people perish for what? For lack of knowledge. My people perish. Relationships perish for lack of knowledge. The devil uh, uh, um, 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 hits people and steals from people because people don't know. Ignorance. Ignorance makes people play into the hands of the enemy and the enemy rob them. There are relationships that have been, uh, that were meant for for the lifting of God's people. They were meant for the transformation of entire generations. But the enemy attacked those relationships and those relationships collapsed and they never lived up to their full potential. And, you know, what can, what can, what can you know, God do? Uh, he can only bring such wisdom to you so you can learn and so that you can go back and see if you could, you know, retrieve uh, the damages that the enemy had already done and maybe it's possible to recover things and, and rebuild and, and do stuff right. Okay, so it can be different types of relationships. It can be a marriage relationship. It can be a friendship relationship. It can be a mentorship relationship. If you don't understand, you know, the power and the purpose of high impact relationships that God bring into your life, you will never take them seriously to protect them. To, to preserve them. See, there are people that God brings into your life. And, and, and I'm, I'm talking about people of opposite sex. That God brings into your life. And they were not supposed to be, the relationship was not supposed to become uh, romantic. The relationship was supposed to stay um, um, uh, platonic. Because they are high impact relationship. You are supposed to pour into each other's life. Even though, yes, it's, it's, it's opposite sex. 
But people get carried away. People get stupid. People allow the flesh to come in and then, you know, erotic things come in and, and fleshly things come in and sexual things come in and the relationship is messed up. A relationship that's supposed to produce growth and increase is messed up because people don't understand this thing about high impact relationship. So I'm, I'm, I'm praying today that you will get the wisdom of God regarding high impact relationships then you can be careful to observe who god brings why god brings who he brings and then you can nurture it and derive the benefit the maximum benefit from that relationship and allow the grace of god to flow god needs relationships for grace to flow god needs relationships for the grace of god to flow so so i i, I need you to um um Pay attention, not just today, next week, the week after next, because we are, we are unpacking wisdom that will help you build solidly. I see God doing good things in your life, great things, greater things in your life, and you want to pay attention so that you don't sabotage or you don't allow the enemy to sabotage uh, relationships that God has brought or is going to bring into your life to bring the fulfillment of your destiny. Hallelujah. You know, no, so uh, I, I think about certain relationships in the Bible. There was a relationship uh, between Paul and Barnabas. That's a high impact relationship. Barnabas introduced Paul to the church and spoke well for him and made, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, was a good reference for him because the people of God were suspicious of Paul when he got born again because of his bad history and, and the bad reputation of his past. He was a murderer. He was the one who was killing Christians. And the people of God were very sus suspicious of him. But Barnabas came into his life. Barnabas helped him. Eventually, him and Barnabas, you know, became partners and team, a, a ministry team, and they went on the first missionary journey together. That's a high-impact relationship. Uh, and, and unfortunately, the relationship between Paul and Barnabas broke down because of their disagreement around a certain young man called John Mark. And they, both of them could not manage that disagreement, and they agreed to disagree, and the relationship broke down. And uh, Barnabas went with John Mark, and Paul went with Silas. But the work of God continued. That's the thing. Let me say this. The work of God will continue. Even when the, the frailties and the, 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 the limitations of, of man's character get in the way and destroy what God wanted, God still has a way of carrying on his work. In other words, just like what happened with Paul and Barnabas, Paul, Paul split with Barnabas, Paul and Silas went, Barnabas went with John Mark. Uh, even though that relationship, I believe, much more would have come out of it. Much more would have come out of it. But, you know, they couldn't agree. The Bible says a sharp contention arose amongst them. And they couldn't, you know, resolve their issues and the relationship uh, broke up. So I think of a relationship like David and Ahithophel. Ahithophel was David's counselor and, and brought so much wisdom into David's life. But David uh, uh, messed up. Ahithophel was the grandfather of Beersheba, the, the young woman that David had an adulterous relationship with and ended up killing her husband. And that scene of David created so much grief for Ahithophel that Ahithophel's heart became bitter against David that Ahithophel uh, ended up plotting against David with one of David's son, sons who had become uh, 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 rebellious and, and become antagonistic to his father. And the wisdom of Ahithophel was turned into foolishness. But that relationship between the two of them was a high-impact relationship from the beginning. But something went wrong. And that high impact relationship broke. I, I, I think I'm going to, you know, uh, um, devote a session of Thank God this Friday to look at what causes high impact relationship to live less than their potential, to fall short of what their true potential is, so that we can 
um, learn and you know, you know, uh, uh, take evasive action so that high impact relationships that God has brought into our lives, we can make something good come out of them. You know, I think about Paul and Timothy. That was a high impact relationship. I think about Paul and 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 Titus. That was another high impact relationship. I think about Jesus and and Peter, Jesus and James, Jesus and John. Jesus and his disciples, those were high impact relationships. You know, much more was Jesus, James, Peter, and John. Those inner three. Their relationship was so powerful. Those were very high impact relationships. They, Jesus poured into their lives and they poured back into Jesus' life. They served him. They served him and he handed over his mandate. He handed over his commission, his assignment into the hands of these three men as it were as leaders of the band of apostles. So those were high-impact relationships. Uh, and, 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 you know, uh, I am I, hoping that I will remember to come to that today. The devil fights high-impact relationships. The devil fights high-impact relationships. And I, I, I want to note it so that I will come back to it and deal with it. You know, Peter and Jesus, uh, um, uh, Adam and Eve... No, those were, you know, relationships that would have been high impact, but they ended up, you know, being <laughs> sabotaged by the devil. All right. Let me give you another, or other examples of high impact relations. Moses and Joshua. Moses and Joshua. Very high impact relationships. Moses mentored Joshua, but Joshua ended up becoming a, a general in Moses' army. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, 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 and God used Joshua so powerfully. Okay? Naomi and Ruth. Naomi and Ruth. That's another high-impact relationship. You know, Naomi, Ruth was Naomi's daughter-in-law. When Naomi got widowed and her husband died, Ruth clung on to Naomi. Clung on to her, you know, like... like even Naomi tried to encourage Ruth to go. And Oprah, Oprah, there, were, there was Ruth and Oprah. Oprah. Yeah? Ruth and Oprah. Yeah, I'm getting confused with Oprah. Oprah. Oprah went back, but Ruth stayed. Ruth stayed. And, and Ruth followed Naomi back to, he, to her home country, and God sorted and eventually established a, 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 a Ruth. Uh, and gave Ruth a new husband. But that was a high, very high impact relationship. Naomi, Ruth brought much comfort to Naomi and much support to Naomi. And Naomi coached Ruth and helped Ruth fulfill destiny. Okay? So we, so we have Elijah and Elisha. That's another high impact relationship. So like I'm, I'm saying, high impact relationship can be peer level. It can be a mentorship relationship, mentor and uh, uh, and, and protege relationship it can be a relationship between a spiritual father and a spiritual son or a spiritual daughter it can be a relationship between husband and wife it can even be a relationship between business partners so so i want you to know that it, you you have to uh, um, understand when god brings a high impact relationship into your life that you protect that relationship that you keep that relationship what it's supposed to be you see, when you don't know that it's a high-impact relationship, you, you, you mistake, you, you make mistakes that, that eventually destroy the relationship because you didn't understand. So, so, so that's the purpose of this teaching today, to help you uh, see that there are certain relationships God has brought into your life or is bringing into your life or is going to bring into your life that are high impact. And you need to cherish and nourish those relationships so that you can get the benefit, the maximum benefit that God had in mind uh, for bringing or for even conceiving those relationships in his mind. Okay. Uh, another example of high impact relationships is Mary and Elizabeth. Remember how when the angel came to Mary to announce to Mary that she was going to get pregnant. And, and once Mary accepted, the angel said to her, your cousin Elizabeth has also had a divine visitation and she's pregnant. She who was called barren is now pregnant. 
And basically, heaven was saying to Mary, you need Elizabeth. It's a high-impact relationship. Go and meet her. Go and, uh, and build with her. And the Bible says that Mary went to Elizabeth's house and stayed in her house for many months. And the Bible says, at the, on the day that they met, the babies in their wombs, well, the baby in Elizabeth's womb leaped for joy when, when, when they, they greeted each other, when the two women greeted each other, the baby in the womb was jumping. That's one of the ways you know a high-impact relationship. Something inside of you, something that you are pregnant with, begins to, to leap. <laughs> Your vision begins to be activated. That's a high-impact relationship. A, a relationship that causes you to, to uh, that causes the, the baby, the vision you're carrying inside, to jump, to leap, to become excited, to become, to, to be challenged, to be empowered. That's one of the characteristics of high impact relationship. That's how you know. Uh, I'm going to tell you uh, the characteristics of high impact relationship so that you, you can identify one the moment is forming. The moment is forming, you know that this is a high impact relationship and you, you will do everything you can to protect it, to nourish it, to, 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 to grow it, to develop it to full stature. Unfortunately, the body of Christ is littered with failed potential high impact relationships. Potential high impact relationships, but they have failed. They failed. And the purposes of God were not you know, maximize in those relationships. There are mentoring relationships, but people walk away from their spiritual fathers and their spiritual mothers because they don't understand this thing about high-impact relationships. People walk away from, from people God has sent into their lives to help them walk uprightly, to help them become who they're supposed to be, but because they are myopic. Because they, are, they, they, they don't understand the wisdom that I'm sharing today, they walk away from those relationships. Well, wisdom is coming to you today so that you can learn these things and correct and correct mistakes that you have made. Maybe you need to go back to that person that you walked away from and say, I'm sorry I walked away from you. I, I, I didn't realize that our relationship was a high-impact relationship. I, I'm supposed to have protected it. I'm supposed to have nurtured it. I'm supposed to have forgiven you when you robbed me. I'm supposed to have made peace with you when, you know, so, so, and so happened between us. But instead, I walked away from the relationship, leaving the relationship to die and to, and to fall, fall apart. I, I, I want us to fix it. That's, that's what you're supposed to do with high-impact relationships. So, the, the, the key word in a high-impact relationship is mutual benefit. That's the key word. Mutual benefit. The relationship is mutually beneficial for both parties. And when you look at it, you see value. It's the value you see, the value you give, and the value you receive. That's what makes it a high-impact relationship. You are able to give value, and you are able to receive value. So any relationship you see like that, where you are able to give value, and you are able to receive value... That's a potential high-impact relationship. You need to nurture it. You need to protect it. You need to, to uh, uh, keep the necessary godly boundaries around, around, that relationship, so, around that relationship so that the devil doesn't corrupt it. There are many relationships that are not supposed to become sexual. They're not supposed to become erotic in any way. But because people don't understand these things that I'm sharing, they allow it. There are people that God brings into you. They are supposed to just be brothers and sisters to you. But because these relationships are high impact, grace is supposed to flow through them. But, you know, you get carried away. And you start, you know, developing feelings where you're not supposed to develop feelings. And, and, and then, you, you know, you don't, you're not disciplined to keep the boundaries. And, and you allow the devil to mess up that relationship. Let me tell you something. The devil loves to mess up high-impact relationships. He loves it. Look at the relationship between Adam and Eve. That's a, that was a potential high-impact relationship. The Bible says it was not good that Adam be alone. God said, I will make you a helper. So Eve was supposed to come into his life to be a helper, to help fulfill the assignment that God gave to both of them from the beginning. But the devil jumped in 
and the devil caused that relationship to fail. Instead of, you know, both of them helping each other fulfill destiny, one uh, opened the door and the other one fell into it. And both of them fell. And both of them fell out of the program of God. Because one person opened the door for the enemy to come in and the other person allowed that door that was opened to, to suck in both of them and they both fell. So, so Adam and Eve's relationship never really became all that it was supposed to be. What was the full potential of that relationship? Both of them were supposed to walk in dominion. They were supposed to be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and exercise, subdue it and exercise dominion in all of the earth. That if their relationship was working, and their relationship attained maturity. If their relationship attained maturity, we would have seen both of them work in the height of dominion. We would have seen both of them, you know, re reproduce the Garden of Eden all over the world. They would have replenished the world with the Garden of Eden. That was the purpose of that relationship. But they failed. And that relationship never fulfilled its potential. And do you know today, there are many high-impact relationships that are never fulfilling its potential. Many, many, many. You know, a relationship that would have been a very powerful high-impact relationship was the relationship between Jonathan and, and, and David. That was a potential high-impact relationship, but that relationship failed. It never, it never became all that it was supposed to become. And, and part of the reason was that it was a difficult choice for Jonathan. Jonathan could not leave his father. Jonathan could not leave his father and follow the will of God. Jonathan discerned the will of God. Jonathan discerned, I am not the one who's supposed to take over the, the throne. David is supposed to take over the throne. So Jonathan discerned the will of God. But Jonathan could not sustain that relationship with David so that their relationship would have blossomed into full maturity. And the purpose of God... For, for bringing them together as covenant friends to be fulfilled. Jonathan stayed loyal to his father and ended up dying. Together with his father, they both died. And that relationship between Jonathan and David never, you know, al arrived at the full potential of, you know, the high impact that God had in mind. You know, Peter and Jesus is another example of a high impact relationship that Satan wanted to hijack. But thank God for Jesus. You know, Peter had spoken in Matthew chapter 16 by the, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit uh, and, 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 and announced the identity of Jesus. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says, yes, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. You know, no, it, it took God to try to explain to Peter who Jesus was. And this is what normally it should happen in a high impact relationship. The Holy Spirit tells you who the other person is. Ah, yeah. The Holy Spirit tells you who the other person is so that you can relate with them according to who they are or who they're supposed to be to you. But when you're not paying attention to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, you will miss that revelation. And when you miss that revelation, Satan will, you know, get in and, and, and spoil things. So, so Peter got the revelation of who Jesus was. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. So, so, so Peter was supposed to relate with the Christ and allow the Christ, which was the office that Jesus worked in, to infuse into him so that he also could become the Christ. Hallelujah. He could also become the Christ. And Satan saw that. And what did Satan do? Satan came and, and spoke through Peter. And rebuke Jesus for thinking about going to the cross. <laughs> for talking about going to die on the cross. Satan spoke through Peter. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Jesus recognized that this is not Peter speaking. This is Satan speaking through Peter. And Jesus rebuked the enemy. <laughs> Get thee behind me, Satan. And that set Peter free. From the, the influence of Satan at that time. But do you know what? It was not the end of it. Satan continuously wanted Peter. Satan continuously wanted Peter. Why? Because that relationship 
It was a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Satan, Jesus said to Peter, Satan had desired to sift you. Satan, where, where did Jesus find Satan desiring to sift Peter? It were things that were going on in the spirit. Jesus realized the power of the relationship between him and Peter and how much Satan was fighting to destroy that relationship. He said to Peter, Satan have desired to have you, to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you. Ah, I have prayed for you. One of the things that you can use to safeguard a high impact relationship is prayer. Is prayer. You need to pray for your marriage. You need to pray for that friend. You need to pray for that brother or for that sister that God has brought into your life. Pray to preserve the relationship because Satan fights high impact relationships. He fights them to destroy it so that because once the relationship is destroyed, the flow of grace is hindered. And when the flow of grace is hindered, the miracles that are supposed to come as a result of the flow of grace are a, a protracted. They are delayed for that. They are delayed for that. There are many people whose miracles have de been delayed because a high impact relationship, a high impact relationship that's supposed to have delivered the grace of God and delivered the miracle was, was obstructed by the enemy and interfered with by the enemy and that relationship fell apart. Now, now they are, they are you know, um, 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 drawn out. The, the miracle is drawn out. It's protracted. And they're wondering why. Why is the miracle, why is my blessing not coming through? Why? Because a high impact relationship that's supposed to feed your life, that's supposed to supply grace into your life, the enemy tampered with that relationship. And, 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 and please, oh, God help me tonight. There are many people God brings you into a high impact relationship. The devil uses your flesh to tell you to get out, to get out, to get out. And because you don't know the things that I'm sharing today, you yield to your flesh. And instead of you to build into that relationship and reinforce that relationship so that more grace will flow, so that more power will flow, so that more wisdom will flow, so that more guidance will flow, so that more mentorship will flow. And then you can, you know, be the blessing with whatever it is that God has given you to give back into that relationship. But instead of you to pay attention, your flesh is telling you. And, and you don't even know when the enemy is organizing so that you don't strengthen this high impact relationship. Can I even tell you something? The relationship between God and Adam was supposed to be a high impact relationship. The Bible says that God wanted Adam to be his friend. Adam was supposed to be a friend of God. But what happened? The devil. The devil stepped in and ruined that relationship. And ruined that relationship. To, to the point where today, God is still wanting <laughs> to build high impact relationships with people. God wants to be your friend. He's your father, but he wants to be your friend. That just like Abraham and Abraham's relationship with God was a high impact relationship. Very high impact. And, 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 and God wants to establish the same thing with you today. So, so you've got to be careful and not allow the enemy to come in there and, and, and strain that relationship and shrivel it where it's not growing. You, we need to pay attention. High impact relationships. There are certain blessings that have been earmarked to come into your life through a high impact relationship. Certain promotions, certain liftings, certain manifestations of the grace of God, of the blessings of God, supposed to come into your life. But you, you, if you're not careful, you allow your flesh to pull you away from a high impact relationship, whereby now the relationship is weak. You, 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 you know, it's weak. Because one of the things that God uses to sustain high impact relationship is fellowship, is communication, is fellowship. God used to come every day in the cool of the day to Adam to fellowship with him because that's where they were building the friendship. So, so three characteristics of high impact relationship. Let, let, let me you know, share that and then I'm going to close the curtain for today. I'm going to continue next week with part two of this teaching. It's so powerful, the things that the Spirit of God is giving me to share. 
three characteristics of a high impact relationship. Number one is transformation. There is transformation happening in the lives of the people. Transformation. You can see changes. You can see growth. You can see increase. You can see, you know, progress because this person came into your life. And it can be any kind of progress. You know, material progress, financial progress, spiritual progress, career progress. You know, that's what high impact, high impact relationship bring transformation, bring progress. Number two, characteristic of high impact relationship is mutual motivation. They motivate you to aim higher. They motivate you towards your God-ordained goals. You motivate each other. There's motivation. Number three is productivity. You can see that you are more productive because this person is in your life. You can see that you are more fruitful because this person is in your life. Those are the characteristics of high-impact relationships. Like I said, the, 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 the overarching word is mutual benefits. Mutual benefits. You, you bring something to the table, I bring something to the table, and we help each other. I pour into your life, you pour into my life. Then the, the impact that God desires begins to you know, find expression. Oh, my timer I just said I need to round up. I need to round up. Next week, I'm going to teach you on how to build high-impact relationships. How to initiate them and how to build them. I'm also going to share with you um, um, how to defend high-impact relationships. You know, how to defend high-impact relationships, how to protect them, how to nourish them. I'm going to also teach you on the poisons, the things that poison high-impact relationships, the things the devil uses to try and kill high-impact relationships. All right. And then how to remedy it when problems arise or when the devil has put his ugly hands in the soup. How do we take his ugly hands out? I'm going to share all of that next week in part two or how uh, building high impact relationship. I pray for you today uh, that every relationship that God has designed to be a blessing to you, to bring increase into your life, to bring progress into your life, that, that, that the enemy had tampered with, that grace be released to you today to recover all, to recover, to retrace your steps, to reconnect with that person, to go and make amends. If you need to you know, ask for forgiveness, ask for forgiveness. If you need to make restoration, make restoration. If you are about to do something stupid, you can retrace your steps so that you don't break a high-impact relationship. Uh, God wants you to maximize every relationship that he is bringing to be high-impact for you. God wants you to max maximize it. And I pray today that you will um, recognize those high-impact relationships and make sure that they are mutually beneficial. God bless you. I've enjoyed sharing this with you. I'm going to continue next week, Friday, in another edition of Thank God This Friday with the part two of this message. God bless you. Good night. The Single Ladies Boot Camp is a program for single ladies from all ages and backgrounds run by Pastor Chooks and Toy Nogu.